Hello and welcome to today's webinar. On behalf of International Airport Review and SkyFi, I would like to thank you all for attending. My name is Lily May, I am the Assistant Editor of International Airport Review and I will be moderating the audience Q&A at the end of the webinar. Following today's presentation and discussion, we will move on to a live question and answer session where you can pose your questions to the speakers. Please remember that you can submit your questions at any point during the webinar using the questions panel situated on the right hand side of your screens. Now, I'll hand over to today's first speaker, who is Brendan. Thanks, Lily. Welcome, everyone, and thank you for joining us. I'm Brendan Mass, VP of Service Delivery here at SkyFi. Today, we'll discuss the challenges airports face as they look to recover. Then we'll share how analytics can provide actionable data and a deeper understanding across the passenger journey to help address these challenges. We also have a great panel of guests joining us today. From Charlotte Douglas International Airport, we have Katie McCoy. She's the Business Intelligence Manager. And from Heathrow Airport, we have Lowell Mason, who is the Senior Data and Systems Manager, along with SkyFi's very own Stephen Callender, VP of Solutions Consulting. They'll share how a crowd analytics solution helped them address challenges and evolve their operations. And then we'll wrap up with a 15-minute Q&A with Stephen. Here at SkyFi, we draw upon our vast global experience. We service a variety of verticals, over 11,000 venues, and process 11 billion data points every single day. With our CrowdVision product, we service airports all over the globe, including 50% of the top US airports. Our foundation is built upon a data intelligence platform that captures, connects, and unifies your data sources. And this helps provide a holistic end-to-end -end view of your airport's operations. From here, our data science team works with you to verify the accuracy of the data then aggregates and anonymizes it. This ensures all data is GDPR compliant. Then you can access intelligence insights to address your challenges. This results in positive changes to your operations, which ultimately leads to a better passenger and travel experience. Airport operations and passenger journeys continuously evolve. It's our goal to future-proof your strategy by helping you understand your past and present data so you can meet today's needs while planning for the future. Before we dive in, I'd like you to think about everything your airport has been through in the past two years. Think about the ways you've had to innovate, reorganize, and manage expectations. Now, think about where you are today. What are your airport's top priorities? Last summer, ACI Europe published a report on airport passenger flow and crowd management during the COVID-19 crisis and beyond. The report discusses the new priorities airport managing bodies now face. The first priority, ensuring passengers have enough space. Airports must limit crowding and optimize floor space. The second is reducing time spent at the premises. Airports must provide efficient and fast passenger processing and offer attractive but safe entertainment and retail services. And the third priority is to save the business. Airports must determine how to maximize revenues through high value services while adhering to new safety protocols and not overtaxing their resources. ACI states that in order to meet these challenges, airports must understand passenger behavior. We couldn't agree more. Our global airport experience provides us a unique understanding of the challenges faced by each continent and region, each type of airport, whether it be domestic or regional or international, within the context of the passenger mix from tech and travel savvy to the casual. Let's take a look at the passenger journey. I'll show you how understanding passenger behavior can help make positive changes that impact your overall operations. Let's start with the departing passenger journey. Once a passenger reaches your car park, your main goal is to help them park easily and quickly. You need to understand and predict which parking zones are most utilized based on airline or terminal schedules. Then you can optimize zones by understanding occupancy based on time of day and day of the week. These historical and real-time trends help you better plan optimal location and entries and exits. Plus, you can better plan signage and decrease congestion, providing the passenger with a more efficient journey. As a passenger enters your airport, they'll head to the check-in. The main goal here is to maximize throughput, which increases the amount of passengers you can service. When you speed up processing times, it makes the passenger journey less stressful and more efficient, while helping you ensure your staff is not overburdened. 
In order to do this, it's important to understand the types of passengers that need to check in. Are they flying regional, domestic, or international? Do they have bags they need to check? Once we know that, we can optimize. By monitoring and managing kiosk and desk use and alerting staff when queues need attention, you can reduce congestion, staffing costs, and ensure efficient passenger journeys. Once a passenger checks in, they head to security. A global passenger survey from 2021 found that only 22% of passengers were satisfied with the time taken for security processing. This is a negative sentiment, but it's also a fantastic opportunity to improve. At security, our goal is to keep lines short and moving quickly in order to reduce missed flights. When you're able to display checkpoint wait times to passengers, monitor queues and alert staff when they need attention or redirection, you can more easily manage the throughput of each checkpoint. And this allows you to optimize staffing and reduce costs. Not to mention, your passengers will feel less stress and anxiety. Once a passenger makes their way through security, they'll pass through retail areas. And your goal here is to better serve passengers' needs and preferences so you can maximize revenue. In order to do so, you must understand your passengers better. This is where analytics comes in. They allow you to understand the right mix of brands and categories that passengers prefer or that are complementary to one another. By understanding how effective different retailers are at attracting passengers, you can better optimize your tenant mix across terminals. You can also make data-driven decisions about the best location for retailers and which types promote cross-sells, among others. You can even communicate with passengers in real time. With automated campaigns, you can deliver targeted retail offers, promote amenities and services, and deliver relevant information about your airport. Then you can understand how marketing campaigns, promotions, and product launches impact visitation behavior and conversion. You can also measure the impact of spend across multiple marketing channels to drive in-store visits, conversions, and even loyalty. Passengers can fully relax once they make it to the gate, so if you help them arrive on time, you'll reduce missed flights, optimize your gate scheduling, and reduce overall terminal congestion. You can do this by correlating flight information from AODB systems with historical passenger movement. You can also use that to predict curb to gate journey times, providing the lead times when passengers are likely to arrive at their gate. Once passengers have a moment to put down their bags and take a seat, they usually hop on their phones or laptops. This allows you the opportunity to collect rich information about passengers when they log into your Wi-Fi. You can create unique passenger segments to analyze how different types of passengers are using your airport. And that in turn helps you build and measure the performance of targeted marketing campaigns. Now let's take a look at the other side of the journey as the passenger arrives to their destination. There are two types of arrival passengers, those that have arrived at their destination and those that are connecting to another flight. Once they deplane, they're often looking for a restroom or a baggage claim area. An integrated analytics system means that you can update digital wayfinding screens in real time to direct passengers to the closest and or least congested restroom or to their specific baggage claim carousel. This keeps your passengers informed, creates a more efficient journey, and prevents crowding from forming outside of gates. You can also monitor the last time a facility, like a restroom, was cleaned and stocked. And this allows airports to keep their facilities as clean as possible without exhausting their staff, because you're cleaning based on need rather than fixed schedules. After a restroom break, a connecting passenger may head to the retail area for a snack or to peruse some shops, then they'll make their way to their gate. However, a destination journey looks a bit different. A destination passenger's main goal is to collect their luggage and exit the airport. So let's take a brief look at that journey. If a passenger is arriving from another country, they'll first need to pass through immigration before exiting the airport. A 2021 global passenger survey found that only 38% of passengers said they were satisfied with queuing time in immigration and border control. And this is where an integrated analytics platform gives you an opportunity to provide a better experience. You can access real-time data to help determine whether passengers are at risk for misconnections. If they are, airlines can preemptively rebook passengers. 
This gives passengers relief and reduces operational expenses from missed flight connections. You can also strategically open and close lanes based on occupancy, allowing staff to inform passengers of processing times and queue times, which auto balance the queues. Once a passenger finishes immigration, they're eager to collect their luggage and letting a passenger know which way to go is key. This helps eliminate congestion and continues to provide the passenger an efficient journey. Digital wayfinding screens can update based on autonomous real-time data directing passengers to baggage claims and providing them with bay numbers for their luggage pickup. After a passenger has collected their luggage, now they're ready to get out of the airport. Your real-time data can dynamically update screens and direct passengers to the quickest Lyft, Uber, taxi, shuttle, or train. You can also use passenger motion analytics to develop and plan pickup location points. That will decrease vehicle and passenger congestion as well. Combined, this is a cohesive solution that ensures passengers and vehicles can enter and exit the airport premises as efficiently as possible. So now that we've covered how understanding passenger behavior can help you address all three priorities that airports are facing today, we'll share how analytics can help your overall terminal operations. A big priority for airport executives is to make sure that your staff doesn't experience burnout, even in dynamically changing operations. Motion analytics helps you discover how changes to staff allocation impact queue times and checkpoint throughput. You can also forecast or trigger maintenance and cleaning cycles from detailed occupancy counts. This allows you to better plan your staff members and schedules to reduce operating costs and passenger congestion. Another way to improve your airport is to plan ideal asset placement. You can understand the best locations for assets like information screens and kiosks, e-passports and biometric scanners, common use equipment, luggage trolleys, and ticketing systems. This helps create a more informed and efficient passenger journey, which improves sentiment and decreases congestion. A priority for all airports right now is to ensure the health and safety of passengers and staff. It's now possible to measure crowd density and provide notifications to airport staff when social distancing policies are not being followed or when incidents occur. In the event of an incident like a fire or a spill, Real-time motion analytics can alert staff to provide the swiftest response. Passengers notice when airports are on top of health and safety protocols. This ends up being a simple way to increase passenger sentiment. Speaking of keeping passengers happy, it's a good idea to gauge where the sentiment level is and how to improve it. With an integrated platform, you can automatically trigger surveys to passengers based on their location, segmentation, and specific journey through your airport. This is the data that helps you gain insight into which factors have the biggest impact on passenger experiences in order to improve satisfaction. Not only is it important to keep passengers happy, but also your advertisers. Motion Analytics helps you understand the optimal locations for advertising and digital media based on passenger flow, dwell, and segmentation information. This rich passenger movement data and segmentation increases advertising yield for your media buyers. By better understanding traffic flow, journey times, and congestion, you can make more informed decisions about how and where to improve efficiency, design, development, and layout. When it comes to improving performance and efficiency of your airport, understanding occupancy patterns is very important. It can drive greater efficiency and reductions in HVAC and lighting energy consumption. In fact, once you make any improvement in your airport, from efficiency, design, or layout perspectives, you can see if it actually led to an improvement. You can compare the data before and after your changes to understand if there was an actual positive change. Accuracy of forecast models for the ROI of future development projects increases dramatically as well. You're now well-versed on how passenger analytics helps your overall terminal operations. So, where do you start if your airport is interested in implementing a crowd analytics solution? Here's where ACI shares some insight. They point out that when you're considering the kind of solution to implement at your airport, it's important to choose an integrated platform. This is the type of platform that can ingest any type of sensor or existing data 
and can work airport-wide by default. This will serve as the core of your total airport management solution. They also note that a passenger flow and crowd management solution is an investment in time and resources, but it will deliver value even after the COVID recovery phase. An integrated platform allows you to act decisively to increase efficiency and profitability while improving the passenger experience. And over time, this data builds and can provide reliable evidence for planning, maintenance, management, and investment decisions. SkyFi's Crowd Vision solution leverages data from various sources, so airports can get real-time information about movement, occupancy, and dwell time throughout all areas. This knowledge allows airports to optimize staffing at check-in and security, take action to reduce crowding and long queues, and communicate with passengers so they can own their journey. Automating these processes is key, not only to manage queues and crowding during the recovery phase, but also to provide additional value when the recovery phase comes to an end. Now, I'll hand it over to our subject matter expert, Stephen Callender. He'll introduce our panel of experts who will discuss how they're currently using an integrated platform at their airport. Thank you, Brendan. Uh, so I'm Stephen Callender, VP of Solutions Consulting at SkyFi. Um, as Brendan mentioned, analytics can help with almost any challenge you have throughout your airport. Today, we invited Katie and Lowell to share some real-world examples of how their airport an uses analytics to help solve their problems. Uh, Katie McCoy is here from Charlotte Douglas International Airport. CLT is consistently ranked among the top five busiest airfields in the world and top 10 for passenger traffic globally. Katie, the floor is yours. Great, thank you, Stephen. Good to be with all of you. So a little about the Charlotte Douglas International Airport. Um, the terminal was built in 1982 here in beautiful Charlotte, North Carolina. Fast forward almost 40 years. Um, in 2019, CLT exceeded 50 million departing and arriving passenger activities, making the airport one of the busiest in the world. In 2021, just this past year, there were over 43 million passenger activities, which was a 60% increase over 2020 and just 14% below that 2019 pre-pandemic level. CLT is served by eight major carriers, 15 regional carriers, and three foreign flag carriers, and it's the second largest hub for American Airlines. We have 115 gates divided between five concourses with five security checkpoints. So about the five security checkpoints. One of the many wonderful things about CLT is that passengers can access any gate from any checkpoint. So if you're flying out of gate A3, feel free to use security checkpoint E. And until 2020, CLT did not have a technology solution to monitor and share the wait times for these five checkpoints, which would enable passengers to more efficiently use the space, no back and forth trying to figure out which line was moving fastest, and that better efficient use of space also enhances the passenger experience. And this more efficient use of space is of course very important from the internal operations perspective as well. Additionally, there wasn't a technology solution to count the number of passengers at the checkpoints or the throughput. And remember my first point about CLT that the terminal was built in 1982. And my second point was that CLT facilitated 50 million in playments and deployments. So a lot has changed in 40 years and the terminal lobby became undersized, making the ability to monitor passenger wait times and throughput all the more important. So that was opportunity number one, which you see listed here as problem number one, to automatically measure and display passenger wait times in an undersized terminal lobby. And I'll come back to problem number two, but if we could go to the next slide. Let's see. There we go, thank you. Um, on this slide, you'll see a photo from August 1st of 2021. Um, a lot of passengers in a 1982 size ticket lobby. This is not a normal day at CLT. This is certainly an anomaly that I just used for illustrative and slightly exaggerated purposes to underscore the benefits of more efficient use of space. Fortunately, CLT leadership had been well underway with planning for renovating the 191,000 square foot terminal lobby and expanding it by 175,000 square feet. Construction started at the end of 2019 and is scheduled for completion in fall 2025. 
you'll see the drawings for that future state here on the right side of the screen. So CLT needed not just a solution to monitor and communicate passenger wait times, as well as report on passenger counts, it also needed to be nimble during that major construction. Through CLT's partnership with SkyFi, we're leveraging the LiDAR sensors to provide all of that. So on the next slide, take a look at that. Very good, thank you. You'll see to the right, that's our um, internal dashboard that, uh, that displays the passenger queuing. This is checkpoint A. Using the dashboard, staff can see real time and historical wait times and passenger counts also offering an opportunity to monitor ticket lobby activity remotely. And to the left, you'll see the display on the CLT website and app. This is a passenger facing display, listing the wait times for each of the five security checkpoints, including both standard and TSA pre-check lanes. In this particular example, the passenger would know before walking in the front door that she should go right to checkpoint E or far left to checkpoints D or E. That provides an overview of the core function of SkyFi's LiDAR technology solution at CLT for queue management. If we go back two slides, let's look at that second problem or second opportunity that was referenced. There, uh, excellent, thank you. So that second one, um, measure efficiency of new automated lane screening equipment, ASLs, to guide future investment of other ASLs. So um, CLT has been able to innovate um, in the way we leverage the LiDAR solution for other needs that we hadn't anticipated. For example, during this significant terminal lobby expansion project, CLT wanted to evaluate efficiency gains from using automated screening lanes, the ASLs, compared to the current standard screening lanes. In partnership with SkyFi, we identified both ASL lanes at checkpoint E and the standard lanes using checkpoint A in the system and monitoring when they were in use and how many passengers each of the lanes were processing in 10 minute increments. These reports were then provided to CLT's team members and engineering firms to inform the investment in future use of automated screening lanes at CLT's security checkpoint. So again, being able to um, expand how we have used the LiDAR technology beyond just queue management. So in summary, CLT has used SkyFi's LiDAR technology for both internal and external uh, queue management, as well as equipment efficiency testing. And uh, with that, I think I will turn it over to Lowell. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Hi, I'm Lowell Mason uh, from uh, Heathrow Airport. And what I'm gonna take you through today is our journey through the pandemic of using an automated queue management system to better inform our strategy with our uh, immigration halls and managing things to really try and give our passengers the best service in the world. Uh, as everyone's aware, we've had uh, quite a challenge globally with the pandemic. And one of the things that we started our journey on just before the pandemic struck was centered around how can we get to a better automated queue management measurement solution? And we invested money in trying to work out what the best product was to use. Uh, for one of our terminals, we opted to use uh, CrowdVision, uh, which then allows us to get parity and understanding of what's going on. And just when the pandemic started, we really said, how can we go about doing this in a smart manner through using the system? Prior to that, we used a more manual solution of really getting someone to take a card and as you pass through the queue in the immigration hall, time it to see how long they've been there. That only gets you so far, and it's really about how do you really take that next step? And it's really about driving those benefits. So through data and vast data points, and we touched on earlier around how many data points the SkyFi are able to process on a given day, you're able to then essentially measure everything that's coming, coming through, feed the improvement cycle of how we go about to looking to smooth the flow because everyone has you will have peaks you will have bottlenecks and it's just about trying to give everyone a consistent a consistent uh experience and also look to essentially 
get better consistent more reliable data than relying on someone to do something because if you're able to measure everyone that's across that floor space or that plate that you're measuring you're able to really really get a good understanding of how things are flowing and any interventions that you make what that looks to change drive and deliver on so through better better planning through consistent and detailed information we're able to arrive at a much better experience for our passengers overall uh, what I'm going to dive into next will be two pieces. So I'm going to take it in two tranches. Uh, one centers around flow management. So how we would tactically go about using the information and the system on the day. And the second phase will be about our much more helicopter view of, right, we've collected all of this information over a period of time. What do we now do with that information and how can we better inform our processes going forward? If you could flick to the next slide, please, that would be great. Here we have uh, an overview of our immigrant, one of our immigration halls. And what we're able to do is to really segment up the immigration hall to give us an overarching understanding of our four different passenger flows as they come through. So we've had got our EAQ, our non-EEA so for the European Economic Area, a fast track queue where you, if you wanna go through that channel because you're trying to get somewhere in, a, in very quickly, then you can. And then a look at our uh, electronic gates queue. And what the system in CrowdVision allows us to do uh, is anyone who are monitoring or responsible for that process management on that day, you can really have that helicopter view of understanding how are we performing? Are we on top of it? Uh, if you could go back one slide, please. Yeah. How are we performing? How it's going? Uh, are we do we have any concern so is anything likely to flash red to us which tells us look we're not in a good state how can we try and take some corrective actions to improve that situation for our passengers and just get an overall understanding of what's going on uh, we then have some profile charts on the right hand side which allows us to understand the turn up profile for some of our passengers into our immigration halls so that we can have a look at our resource see if it's deployed efficiently are we happy with what we have or do we need to take any corrective interventions there if you go to the next slide, please. The converse of all of that, and as I touched on earlier with the data points, centers around our overall monthly understanding or timely, much more timely performance reporting to understand how things are going. So we have opted to use the Microsoft Power BI solution to visualize our data. So through our business intelligence strategy. And what this allows us to do is to really get a nice helicopter view in different facets. So we have what we have here in front of you now is a desktop view. We also have a mobile view. So you don't have to be tied or tethered to a laptop to be able to understand what's going on and when. You can then deploy that on a mobile to be able to access that information. What we're able to do is to overlay different, differing months of information to see what it really means to us, see how it's going. Uh, is anything materially different this month to last month because of conditions of change? So it could be uh, country entry regulations through to uh, differing staffing profiles because someone's trying trying to do something different to really understand what does that really play out to in terms of a real business benefit and the actual passenger experience that they're seeing. So through analytics, through the uh, Skyview platform and through the sensors that uh, are deployed in our terminals, we're really able to get an aggregated view of a lot of incredibly powerful, rich and detailed information to really inform how we how we deal with our current life now, what it may mean to us in the near in the near term, and what it really does mean to us in the future. So it's really allowed us to unlock the potential of giving our passengers a good experience, a great experience, and an even better experience going forward in the future. That's it from me, and I'll hand that to Stephen. Thank you. Thanks, Lowell, and thank you also, Katie. Really appreciate that. Great presentations. So this concludes the uh, webinar portion. And so next we'll go ahead and open it up to questions. Perfect, thank you very much. And thank you all for your excellent presentation. Um, we will now move on to our question and answers. Don't forget, you can still submit your questions using the question panel, which is located on the right hand side of your screens. So let's take a look at our first question. Uh, we have, uh, you speak about passenger segmentation. 
how can that be achieved? That's a great question. So passenger segmentation can be done in a, in a variety of different ways, depending on how you'd like to go about it. Um, you know, the, the offerings that we deploy at airports go from very granular uh, passenger positioning and understanding, you know, queue specific behavior to more broad analytics using um, in Wi-Fi infrastructure um, and other technologies like that. If you look at the more granular side, um, we can segment passengers by uh, the experience that they take part in at the airport. So from the time they enter the terminal doors, uh, did this group of passengers check a bag? Um, if they checked a bag uh, or checked in, did they use a kiosk or a check-in desk? Um, and then um, there's also passengers who just go straight through to security. So depending on that, um, that land side, experience, that's a great way to segment different passengers. Um, if they're if they're checking bags, we can also determine which flight they're going to be on. Um, so there, there's a lot of data that we can get just right there in the check-in lobby and, and security. Uh, past that, if you if you look airside um, through our Wi-Fi analytics uh, platform and our engage platform, which provides a, um, a captive portal for your Wi-Fi system, we can collect uh, demographic information about passengers um, in a privacy, secure, and sensitive way to be able to help understand um, uh, shopping behavior of passengers on, on, uh, throughout the concessions. Um, through Wi-Fi analytics, we can also uh, capture repeat visits at um, individual concession uh, stores, um, dwell time, uh, that sort of thing. Even looking all the way to the gate, um, you know, dwell time at gates using Wi-Fi analytics or using other other sensors um, of passengers who were going to a specific destination. Um, we can create a segment around that to understand how early they they show up to their gate, which could be an indication of whether they are spending at your concessionaires. So depending on what you're really looking for, there are a variety of ways to achieve that. Perfect. Thank you. Um, the questions are flying in. So we have another one here that has asked, um, could you explain further about the LIDAR PAX tracking solution at CLT? Uh, what are the benefits compared against other solutions such as mobile phone signal or uh, Senate cameras? Certainly. Katie, so you said specific yeah. to, SL, to CLT? Certainly. Um, so we needed a uh, solution we wanted something that had some anonymity so that ruled cameras out um, but also accuracy and the uh, lidar sensors offered that accuracy from both the passenger count as well as the wait time perspective and then there was that component of being nimble um, during construction and that's also something that the lidar sensors offered to clt Thanks, Katie. That's a that's a good call out. And if I could just kind of piggyback on on that, that I think one of the one of the main differences is that uh, we are the primary sensor that we use for Q analytics um, are lidar sensors. Um, we have camera deployments as well, but we've we've been moving in the direction of lidar because it's so nimble. Um, you don't have to mount them on the ceiling with all the construction that's going on in the ticking lobby at CLT. That would have been <clears throat> that would have been really challenging to uh, to stay on top of with moving things around at the ceiling. So wall mounted, um, being able to move them and recalibrate um, in in a short period of time, I think was really was really important. Um, there's also a lot of overflow in different directions depending on where work is being done in the lobby. So um, having a sensor that has a really far field of view. Uh, was also really important because um, some days you just don't know where the queue is going to overflow and we need to be able to stay on top of it. Great. So how did CLT uh, or Heathrow find SkyFi, um, SkyFi, sorry, CrowdVision? Uh, let me say this again. How did CLT or Heathrow find SkyFi slash or CrowdVision queue management solutions? Katie, do you want to go first or should I go first? 
I think she's saying I can go first. Um, we we found the we found the solution to be quite uh, agile and nimble in what it allowed us to understand. Um, it gave us quite a we have uh, what I can only describe as and Stephen touched on it earlier about having cameras deployed in ceilings. Um, we have different ceiling heights, so it became a structural challenge in order to be able to get the system installed and functioning to give us what we needed. Um, and you start having in, interesting slash unique problems around, for example, if you have a pillar in the way, um, but we were able to get the system in, get it calibrated and get it given us the accurate counts. Uh, what we do find really, really interesting, and it's been quite a journey, is the interaction between what I describe as the people processes and the system processes. You have to have the two working in unison in order to arrive at a value that you can trust, rely on, and stand behind. Um, so we found that to be quite a good journey, uh, quite a nice journey, and we've been able to really get that married up and working in a nice way. So overall, uh, we're happy here with that solution. Katie. And it's funny. So I, um, I when you say how did we find, I didn't know if you meant discovered um, the Crowd Vision SkyFi product. So I will echo exactly what Lowell said in terms of how how it has worked here at CLT. But in terms of discovery, in case that was the nature of the question, I'll just note that we did um, do a proof of concept, but our our contract was through an RFP process um, that uh, that the company was successful. In achieving. Excellent, thank you. So we have another question here. So in what way could this help with a smooth operation around COVID health checks and other restrictions due to COVID? So uh, one of the things that we rolled out uh, at the, early on in the pandemic, and we actually partnered with um, uh, with CLT on this um, uh, during the early stages was developing a feature set called Safe Distance. So our, our sensors were, were actually um, measuring the distance between people and their nearest neighbor. Um, and uh, they were actually a really great partner with just helping us understand. I think it was early on in, in 2020 and I think we were all sort of trying to figure things out together. and. We knew that suddenly the airports didn't have wait times and they had other problems instead. So we just, we tried to, we tried to really um, be agile in that sense and be able to provide some information that was important for them. So uh, we started delivering um, reports to, um, to those early customers, including, um, including CLT uh, and we would get feedback from them. And so, you know, our airport, partners were doing um doing different things at their at their check-in and, and security checkpoints to be able to try to space people out and we would provide a, a measure of density um, of those crowds and they were able to use that as a benchmark to be able to understand okay well if we if we expand the the stanchions of the queue does that have an does that have a positive effect does that have no effect if we put stickers on the ground that tell people to space out is, does that actually do anything um, Fast forward to today, um, that's that's a baked in feature set to uh, to our offering um, is that that density measure. I think it actually goes beyond just pandemic response and it's actually um, more of a, a measure of passenger experience because people just don't like being crowded very often. Um, as far as COVID health checks though, just to touch on that point, um, I, I think uh, any any place where there is passenger demand to to be able to receive a service or go through a process, um, you'll find queuing and crowding around it. And I think measuring that in the same way that we would measure a check-in hall or a security checkpoint is something that um, that we can do to make sure that there are enough people operating those COVID check stations um, to be able to meet that passenger demand. That has become an unexpected experience for some people, um, especially when they're flying internationally. If if suddenly a policy change, they're unaware of it, um, and they're scrambling to get this done, and they're worried about missing their flights. So I think um, it's super important to be able to to quickly process passengers through that experience. Absolutely. So um, are we able to track a passenger journey from checkout, security, terminal, and then boarding to identity total dwell time? Uh, Yes, there are there are ways of doing this. Um, 
and I would say that our Wi-Fi analytics are probably the the, the best option. Um, we are doing Wi-Fi, uh, sorry, airport-wide Wi-Fi analytics at at some airports today. Um, the the thing to the thing to understand about Wi-Fi analytics is that you can cover a, a lot of ground at the airport. And uh, while you won't have that moving dot experience that you saw on, on Katie's dashboard that she showed, um, because it's it doesn't have that that sort of precision for for location, you can identify a, a, a sample of people from the time they arrive at the airport to the time that they leave through a gate. Um, and again, this is you know in many cases we can tap into existing Wi-Fi infrastructure, um, and so it doesn't become a very large infrastructure project. Um, and it's also something that we can get off the ground in a in a relatively short period of time, um, just because it's a, it's more of a data project than it is a a hardware project in many cases. So uh, that that tends to be the best. Um, the other the other thing I would mention is that um, with some of our airport partners, if when we're um, when we're capturing the queue times at security and check in. There are kind of, um, you can calculate standard walk times once you get airside. So by the time they, they get out of security to a specific gate, um, those are fairly standard walk times. So when we're, um, when we are uh, measuring the queue times at those initial uh, choke points for passengers at the beginning, um, we, can, we can sort of stack that up in a, in a fashion where you could tell based on the gate that they're going to and the time of day, what their passenger journey time would be. Um, that would be if they go straight to the gate. Of course, if they get there early and they they go through concessions and so on, that's um, that that can be captured also with with Wi-Fi analytics, but just slightly differently. Great. So we have a two-part question here, actually. So, firstly, do you use an external data management platform? And secondly, how do you handle raw data? Are they are they pre-processed at all? Are they pre-processed? What was that last word? Sorry. So, secondly, how do you handle raw data? Are they pre-processed? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, I'll just give a um, a brief rundown of how it's set up. So, um, depending on the uh, depending on the um, the system, whether it's a hardware-based sensor system or if it's Wi-Fi, I'll touch on the hardware-based first. Um, for both our camera and our lidar systems, we do pre-processing on site. So um, we actually don't get any, even though LIDAR doesn't have any kind of, uh, it doesn't collect personally identifiable information, there is a, a um, what's called a point cloud that comes from them. All of that's processed on site. On the camera system, the, um, the camera images are processed on site on, a, on an on-site server. And then what, what we receive up into our cloud-based crowd analytics platform are, is just position data. So we know what the object is, we know where it is, um, and then and then we can um, provide those analytics through a through a cloud-based platform. So that's that allows you to access your dashboard from your your you know your living room at home um, for convenience or on your mobile device. Um, the first question was if we use a third-party data uh, database. Sorry, <laughs> let me ask it again. No worries. Let me just reread the question. So it was. Um, firstly, do you have use of, of an external data management platform? And then secondly, um, yeah, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, we um, SkyFi has our own proprietary data management platform um, that's that's hosted in the cloud. Um, it's something that has been a a, a project, an ongoing project for a number of years, and it's um, we we have it in very very good shape now. It's it's actually able to con ingest a lot of third party data to be able to line up with the data that we're producing from uh, uh, that we're reporting from your airport. Um, so we're talking you know weather data, traffic data, even like social media data about what people are posting about your airport. Um, there's a number of different ways that things can be connected together. And when that's lined up with the data that we're, we're receiving through uh, sensors at your airport, um, it becomes really uh, meaningful. Brilliant. So another question here is, is there an opt-in, opt-out process for tracking people? 
Um, for for Wi-Fi for Wi-Fi wi captive portal, yes. Um, for uh, a sensor based uh, lidar camera based, we leave that up to the airport. There are there are certain times when um, airports will want to post signage that says that um, sensors are being used to manage the operations and passenger flow of the airport. Um, that's kind of on a case by case basis. But um, if if you have, but if the short answer is no, if not from us, if we have sensors tracking passenger flow through um, through public spaces in an airport, um, there's no way for individual passengers to opt out in that way. Great, thank you. Um, another question is, LiDAR scanner installations is pricey. Is there a practical lower size of airport terminal where it can be used? Are there alternative solutions? Yes, if I understand the question correctly, um, it's they yes, the, the sensors can be pricey. Um, it's balanced also by just using far fewer than some other um, sensor types, which not only uh, balances out with the reduced quantity, but it also um, reduces the time to deploy and also reduces the time for cabling inf infrastructure. So I, I would I would always suggest for airports when they're when they're um, when they're comparing one system to another, always look at the total cost because if it's going to take a longer period of time, more man hours and um, and more uh, network infra uh, network cabling infrastructure, servers and so on, um, you need to look at that that total that total cost. Um, there, I, I think that there, there is actually a, a huge opportunity for um, smaller terminals because we, the sensors that we use today, um, the, the, the sensor technology has really come a long way with, um, you know, a lot of times in the beginning we were, we were, we were working with um, LiDAR sensors that were made to be put in vehicles. And so they were not configured in ways where they were really conducive for us to, to put them in indoor spaces. Since then, um, we've developed really, really great partnerships, um, which has allowed us to give feedback to them. And now we have LiDAR sensors that are actually made for tracking um, the uh, uh, objects inside a, a physical space. So I say, I say that like people, vehicles, cyclists, um, a lot of different objects, not just people. Um, the other thing is they're also, we, we use um, at least half a dozen different sensor models and they all come at different price points. So um, the, I, I would say that there were older, older times when we would have one or two sensor options that we could feasibly use. Now there are way more and there's a lot of price competition. It's really driven price down. Um, there are uh, a lot of the LiDAR manufacturers have um, improve their manufacturing processes, which is usually what makes it, them expensive in the first place. So we're really happy with the state of things now, and we've we've been reducing the size of facility that we install LiDAR in um, every year, um, even outside of airports, things like retail stores um, are able to afford them now. Excellent. So how long did it take between the start of, of the project and completion? Um, i.e. Having, having wait time data, how long did it take to see to see that data? I'm happy to respond for the LiDAR data. And I should note, because LiDAR, that was new for me, so I had to learn what LiDAR was. And of course, I'm familiar with sonar, which uses sound, LiDAR uses light. And as Stephen mentioned, that's what's used on autonomous vehicles. So that's the technology we're using at CLT. And um, installation, we did, um, Stephen was part of that team, we did in the middle of the night um, over the course of one night. And then um, we did, of course, need to do some triangulation, some data validation. So really, I would say within just a matter of um, a few weeks. Stephen, would you say that's fair? Yes. I remember that overnight work pretty well. And uh, <laughs> yeah, it was, it was really quick. Um, it was just a, a small handful of sensors per checkpoint, um, and then and then yeah, I think it was it was uh, two or three weeks before we were able to hand over the dashboard. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Amazing, thank you. So, do you store any personal pa pa any passenger personal data? If yes, do you have 
required compliance, for example, GDPR in Europe? Uh, yes, it depends on it depends on the technology. Um, so, uh, again, the the Wi-Fi system, since it is um, it does leverage MAC addresses of mobile devices in order to understand where people are and unique visits and so on. And then there's also our Engage platform, which is the captive portal. Um, these are run like marketing platforms. They um, we are GDR, GDPR compliant. Um, we uh, we deploy these systems all over the world um, in every continent um, at this point. And so we have been held to really high standards when it comes to privacy protocols in these various places. Um, then over to the camera and, um, and LiDAR side. Uh, as I mentioned before, we don't store images from cameras. Um, that would obviously be a, a, a big no-no, even though they are looking down and can't really see people's faces. Um, it's not something that we store, we leave them on site. LiDAR data, um, same thing, but there really is no personally identifiable information in the first place. Um, but, uh, but just like the camera system, it's just the metadata that we get from the, that we actually store in the cloud. Right, and are you able to track assets? Are we able to track assets? Um, mm -hmm. I know it'd be difficult for us to ask for a little bit of definition on what assets are, but if we're talking about non-human objects, then uh, yes. Um, so right now, in fact, we're um, we're deploying a system um, at uh, at Newark's new terminal A for passenger and um, or uh, sorry pedestrian and vehicle monitoring along their frontage. So um, we've done this before at TNC uh, pick up and pick up and or TNC pickup locations where we're monitoring the, the, uh, the positions of vehicles in relation to where pedestrians are. Um, and with this, we can, we can tell a wealth of data to airports around um, where vehicles are in the lanes, congestion of lanes, lanes how, many, uh, how long does it take for passengers to actually be picked up by a vehicle? And uh, this could be personally owned vehicles, TNCs, um, could be taxis, could be buses and shuttles, different types of vehicles, which can be classified by our system. Um, and so uh, tying that relationship between uh, passengers as they get out of the airport and then they get in their, their different modes of transportation, we can report on that. Um, if, if the question is more about um, tracking like wheelchairs or luggage carts, um, that that is something that we can do. Um, that's actually a camera-based solution. We do things like uh, reporting on unattended baggage that, that are detected, and that's and that's done through the airport's camera system. Um, it works probably just how it sounds. Um, if you know we're using computer vision to be able to detect a bag, and the system alerts if the bag is unattended for a period of time um, that is beyond th a threshold. Um, similar uh, applications can be done for other assets like like wheelchairs and luggage carts. Um, so. Thank you. So did both the airports have to hire new employees to support and utilize the system? Um, what skill sets were needed? Katie, do you want to go first on this one? I certainly can because it's an easy answer, no. There were no um, additional employees and um, the dashboard is pretty straightforward. So that was a, a very quick lesson. How about you, Lowell? Yeah, Pretty much echo what Katie's just said. Uh, it falls into our existing structures that we already have. So from a data management perspective, every airport has a data management side and any existing performance analysts that you have in terms of understanding and interpreting what it's telling us. Great, thank you. So are there any significant ob observations in data from your airports regarding changing passenger um, behaviour in the past years, especially um, during COVID times? That's a, um, a really interesting question. Uh, we've had the system in, well, for pretty much all of the pandemic, so since probably about July 2020. 
Uh, what we have seen is, depending on what your flight profile is in a, as an airport, through the information that's fed back to you through key wait time for us in immigration halls, you can see the trends and patterns in terms of numbers of passengers who have come off the flights, how long the perceived queue experience time is, uh, and how long it takes to process them through the airport. So you can understand and start pl for forward planning as per when things open up or when different countries change their rules you start being able to think about what may that mean to you to understand do you need to potentially do something different so you can get on the front foot a little bit through planning. For CLT, certainly there's been some ahas just in looking at how passengers are using the space, days and times, checkpoints that are busiest, all of that. Um, and then I mentioned some ahas using um, for our ASLs, our automated screening lanes. But what I would note that has been really um, lovely to see, really specific to the pandemic, is we all know that passengers have a, a higher level of angst, understandably, being in a pandemic environment. And what's been really nice is being able to put something in their hands that they can, again, look as they're going through that front door to say, do I go left or do I go right? So I really sense that there's some alleviation of that angst and we've seen some very nice feedback on social media um, and just in conversation with our passengers. Amazing, thank you. Um, that are, is our live Q&A session coming to an end, so I'll pass back to you, Stephen, and then to round up. Thanks, Lily May, and thank you, Lowell and Katie. Really appreciate you guys being here today. So thank you for everyone um, for joining us to learn how an integrated analytics platform can solve your business, operational and passenger experience challenges. Um, and again, thank you very much to our uh, panelists, Lowell Mason and Katie McCoy. If you have any additional questions that uh, you didn't have the opportunity to ask us today, um, you can just send them to marketing at skyfi.com. Uh, that is uh, skyfi, S-K-Y-F-I-I.com. Um, and as a reminder, you will receive a follow-up email from the, with the webinar recording. Uh, thanks again, everyone. Uh, back to you, Lily May. Thank you very much. So again, as a reminder, as you leave the webinar, a very short survey will appear on your screen um, asking you to rate to the webinar. Please take a moment to provide your feedback. Um, if now is not a great time, then please, uh, the survey will be sent to you via shortly via email. So make sure to complete that because we'd be great, greatly appreciate your feedback. Um, and on behalf of International Airport Review and SkyFi, I'd like to thank you all for attending today's webinar. We hope to see you again soon. Goodbye.